Welcome back. Let's talk about the different types that we have in JavaScript. And luckily for us, there aren't that many. There's only seven of them. We have numbers, like five. We have booleans, like true, false. We have strings, like to be or not to be. We have undefined, which we've talked about. We also have something called null. We have another special one that came with ES6, which is symbol. And in here, for now, let's just say just me. And then finally, we have objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're looking at the list and thinking, um, Andre, I think you missed a bunch of others. Where are arrays or functions? Well, before I get into that, Luckily for us, JavaScript has an operator called type of that tells us the type of an item. So let me comment this out and find out what the type of five is. It's a number. All right, that makes sense. What about type of true? If I run this, it's Boolean. All right, so far so good, nice and easy. What if I do type of to be or not to be? That's a string, easy peasy. What about type of undefined? Well, that's undefined. It's a special value in JavaScript, undefined. What about type of null? Whoa, what just happened here? Null is an object? What? This is something that we're going to talk about a little bit more when we get into the object oriented programming part of the course. But this is actually a mistake. I'm not making this up. It's true. Even the creator of the language, Brendan Eich, who created JavaScript, acknowledged it. Remember, no programming language is perfect. We all write programs that, well, can never be bug free. And this is one of those cases that, hmm. This should be null, right? It's an actual type in JavaScript. It's a what we call a primitive type. But when we run the type of null operator, we get object. There was actually a proposal to fix this. But because there's so much legacy code that depends on this type of null being object, that, well, they couldn't really change it because it'll break a lot of programs. So for now, we're stuck with that. And trust me, there's a lot more weird things like that in JavaScript. So let's skip over to the next one. Let's look at type of symbol. If I hit run, it's a symbol. Now, a symbol, like I said, is new in ES6. And it creates something unique for us. That is, a symbol value, in this case, just me, is useful for identifying an object. So symbols are usually used for object properties so that the object's property is unique. We're not going to concern ourselves too much with this. You can read up on it if you want. But it's just a new type that we have that allow us to do some interesting things with object properties. All right, last one, type of. Actually, before we get to type of, let's go back here. Undefined and null. What are the differences between the two? Well, undefined is the absence of a definition. So it's used as the default value when the JavaScript engine initializes our variables, right? Remember our talk about hoisting? Well, we use undefined for anything like that, or even cases where, let's say, functions return undefined when they don't return anything. There's no return keyword in a function or there's missing properties of an object. Undefined simply means, well, there's a variable there, but there's nothing there. Null, on the other hand, is the absence of value. It means there's no value there. I know the distinction's a little bit hard to get, but remember, undefined is the absence of definition. Null is an absence of value. There is no value there. And this is something we'll get into a little bit later on in the course. All right, where were we? Back to objects. If I do type of here, 
and I hit run, it's an object. Nice. That makes sense. Okay, so where are the arrays? Let's have a look. If I do type of array, that's an object. Okay, what about type of, let's say, a function? Like this. If I run this, that's a function. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, Andre, did you just teach us something completely wrong? There's clearly a type of function in JavaScript, right? Well, technically, no. And for now, I need you to trust me on something. I need you to trust me that this diagram makes sense. That is, arrays and functions are objects. That's something that we're going to get back into later on in the course. And we're really going to define what this means. But for now, just remember, functions and arrays are objects. And even though type of function gives us a function, Underneath the hood, a function in JavaScript is just an object. All right, still don't trust me? What if I just do something like this? If I comment out this code and I create a function, function A, and in here I'll say return five. It's a simple function. But now, can I do something like this? Can I add a property to a function just like I can with an object with a dot notation? If what I told you is correct and functions are just simply objects, this should make sense, right? This should work. Well, let's find out. Let's console.log a dot hi. If I run this, all right, it's working. So this is something we'll come back to. But for now, at least maybe 80%, you're convinced that functions are objects. But let's get back to what we're talking about. We have the type of operator here that tells us what type something is. And in JavaScript, we have two distinctions. We have the primitive types, which are right over here. And then we have the non-primitive types. Now, what's the difference between the two? In JavaScript, all types other than the object type are all primitives. So what is a primitive type? It's a data that only represents a single value. So that means this primitive 5, well, in memory, the value is 5. In memory, the value is true. In memory, the value is this piece of string, undefined null symbol. There's no ambiguity about it. A variable of a primitive type directly contains the value of that type. Think of it this way. They're kind of like atoms, where they can't really be broken down into any smaller parts. 5 is just 5 in memory. Null is just null in memory. Symbol just me is just a symbol that has just me in memory. A non-primitive type doesn't contain the actual value directly. What does that mean? Well, if I do something like an object that equals, let's say, an object that has property A equal to Tom, this object doesn't actually contain the value here directly. Instead, it has a reference similar to a pointer to somewhere in memory that the object is held. Now, I know that's still a little bit hard to grasp. And we're going to have a video coming up on pass by reference versus pass by value, where we discuss the difference here a little bit more. But before we get into that video, I want to finish off with one last thing. That is the idea of JavaScript built-in objects. And you can see some of the built-in objects here. Now, when I say built-in objects, I don't mean global objects, like we saw when we added things to the window object. 
No, standard built-in objects come with the language. It's part of the language. And if I scroll through here, we see some familiar ones like infinity, not a number, undefined. If we keep scrolling, we see error, we see symbol, we see number, math, date. And I'll link to this MDN page so you can take a look for yourself. These are built-in objects that come with JavaScript. But you might be asking yourself, why do we have things like, well, Boolean? Why do we have things like number? Why do we have things like string? Didn't we just say that those are primitives? Those aren't objects, right? Well, you may have heard the term, everything in JavaScript is an object. And bear with me here, this gets a little tricky. Many things that we interact with directly in JavaScript, such as strings, numbers, and booleans, which are primitive and not objects, get a little bit complicated by the fact that these primitives have object wrappers, like string or number or boolean. Let me demonstrate for you what these do. For example, if I do true here and I do to string and I run this, I get true in string form. Why is that? This is a primitive type. Why is it acting like an object by using dot notation and doing to string? You see, this is where JavaScript gets a little sneaky. It silently creates a wrapper object around this true, something like this. When we try and attempt to access a property on a primitive. So behind the scenes, it's almost like it's wrapping this in Boolean so that it has access to two string and then finally returns true. Super confusing, I know. So keep in mind that things like Boolean or let's say string, for example, exist in order, in order for us to be able to use some methods on these primitive values. So no, not everything in JavaScript is an object, but there are a lot of object or built-in objects that we can use. So that if we do type of math, for example, that's an object. If we do type of infinity in JavaScript, that's a number. Like I said, types in JavaScript can get a little bit tricky. And most of the time, you don't really need to concern yourself with the inner workings of these things. Try not to confuse yourself too much with it. But I think we still need to work on this idea of objects. Primitive types are simple types, like numbers, strings, booleans, right? But objects, those are still a little bit confusing. So in the next video, let's work a little bit more on this.